All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy when? No, third. What is today? Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Um, my name is Marnie Hernandez, and today we are doing our second part of Alaska. Okay. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, so, do we have any brand new agents here today with us? And again, um, so congratulations. Hello. Welcome. Um, so what it is, is uh, this is a certificate workshop where we learn about different destinations, programs, um, vendors, et cetera, and we do it together, okay? So we do it together, um, learn together, meet other agents, um, uh, share experiences and stuff so like, um, you know, Alaska, many of you may have been to Alaska, so you can share personal experiences, um, suggestions, et cetera, okay? Now, um, again, right here is our uh, list for the month, okay? We're going to be doing one for April, or for May. Um, I do them Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Sundays have been like kind of registered for, um, saved for cruises. So we've been doing Princess Cruise Line. That's a long one, okay? Um, so just kind of wanted to share with you. Um, if you're new, the calendar is right here. If you want to sign up with this group, it's just ways. It's just one of my groups that I have um, certificate workshop marketing ideas. So we can all help each other, right? That's what the main thing is, guys. You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So go in, register, um, and then you'll see these trainings. And as I was talking about um, get in here and pre-register. We just did New Orleans. Oh my gosh, amazing. And guess what? They have a fam trip, familiarization trip I signed up for. Um, that means you get to go at a discounted rate because what they do is they want to bring you out and show you what they have so you can offer to your client. So again, um, that's really cool. And because again, we work as partners, right? They want the business and we want the business too. So we help sell each other, right? All right. So again, pre-register, we still have US Virgin Islands right here. And we also have um, uh, London that we're going to do, okay? Uh, this page is right here. Um, I'm putting the link here. So just sign up for this page. You have to make sure you answer the questions or Sandy will kick you out. <laughs> If you do not get approved, it's because you didn't answer the question, okay? Um, and again, uh, you know, like here, I, I always post the day before, too, to let you guys know, you know, hey, this training's coming up. Make sure you guys get in here and get registered, okay? Um, because, again, we want to make sure we get in, get ready. This one's a long one. Um, also, I want to share with you, I do have all the recordings here. And again, um, I have them here on my YouTube channel, okay? So you guys can follow me here, um, select all, just in case you guys can't um, finish today, uh, you can watch my videos, okay? Uh, the testing, I did stop recording the testing, but guys, like I'm telling you, get in and do New Orleans. How about Princess? You want a free cruise? I went on a 15-day cruise to, uh, to um, Hawaii out of LA, $280 is all you pay but you have to finish the training. We're on part seven, okay? Uh, so it's a long one, okay? But it's well worth it. Uh, Want to learn about team building right there, okay? So lots of great information in here on my YouTube channel. We did Virgin Voyages. Make sure you guys do Virgin Voyages. That's the adult-only cruise line. All right. One other thing is we do have... Um, right here. Um, and again, order collateral, guys. But right here is our list of all the trainings that we have completed and um, and current ones we're doing. As you see here, we've done the first one. We're doing the second one and the third one, okay? So these are my YouTube and these are the sites to do the trainings. Now, um, again, you guys can do these all on your own. But if you have a client that's going to you know, Aruba, and you want to find out more about Aruba, do these trainings, get in here and learn about Aruba. Up here at the very top is all the like the academies that you can register for. So like I said, you can sit there all day long next weekend and just sit there and do trainings. Some are 15 minutes, some are 10 hours, you know, so uh, just wanted to share that. So all this great information's in here. As I said, we're going to be doing London. 
Um, so the ones in yellow are ones that we're going to be doing, okay? All right, and if you have any ideas for next month, we do have Poland, Hawaii, Sandals, Canada, Scotland, India, Thailand, Tennessee, and Illinois. We're trying to do those for next month. And I think we're going to follow up with Cunard after Princess, okay? So we're finishing Princess, and then we'll redo Cunard because you get a free cruise there also. All right, so enough about that. Is everybody up and ready to get going on our second part of the um, of the uh, Alaska training? I'm doing my certificate workshop and then I'll look and see. Thank you. Okay. Did you say Ireland? No, but I think we have Ireland in here. I love Ireland and I thought we did something. Maybe not, but let me look. If it's not, I'll put it um Ireland yeah here's there's one for Ireland that we did already right there yep okay and we're always doing updates too just like when you guys do Disney and you do Marriott um there's always updates so remember that just because you finish it doesn't mean you can't you know you you can keep using the perks um a lot of times you have to keep doing updates okay so remember that um Disney right here um, I actually just finished my other one with Disney. Um, but if you go down here to Disney, right here, there's the 2023 assessments, okay, that you have to do, okay? So make sure you do that. All right, let's go ahead and get logged in for Alaska. I'm doing it under my boyfriend's account because I already did it under my account. And so he's an agent also, so I do all his work for him. All right. So here we are, and remember here, training, news, toolkit, okay, sample itineraries, because again, we want to help you to sell to your client, okay? How about webinars? Another reason why we do these is you once you finish training and getting your certification that you get a post, um, you're going to get a lot of promotional material, invites, webinars, lunch and learns, etc. cetera. So uh, finish these um certifications okay meet the team and events coming up okay so we're going to go to training so we've completed introduction looks like we're working on interior okay so as you see there's a lot here okay uh so we're going to go ahead and get started um hopefully we'll get through two of these today because we do have a ways to go <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, everybody good? It said interior, Alaska's golden heart city and northern light capital resides in Alaska's interior, not to mention the tallest mountain in North America. This module will take you through everything to do and see in Alaska's interior. Okay. More information. I think that's where it clicks on the start region intro interior. Yes. So this is where we start. Um, again, guys, if you um, if you're new, a lot of us will follow along on our phone and then do the test on the computer. Otherwise, they have split screens. But again, what I want to explain to you guys is I used to do the test. We do the test together. So try to make sure you come to the live trainings, um, because right now I've been stopping when we do the test, because a lot of people are just getting into my, you know, YouTube and going through this Disney training and skipping all the training and just doing the test so they could say, look, I'm a Disney specialist. No, you're not. You didn't even go through the training, okay? So I'm kind of um, stopping that. If you come live, we know you did the whole training and great, you deserve it, okay? If not, I'm sorry, you have to take that test on your own. And some of these princess and Disney are horrendous. <laughs> all right, let's get going. Um, also, uh, if you have a question, make sure you put it to everyone and not to, not to me specific because I'll be reading and I want to make sure you get your answer. Okay. All right. So region intro, interior. Interior is characterized by large rivers in broad valleys and the tallest mountain, North America, Denali. As far as the eye can see, there are wide expanses of tundra and forests teeming with wildlife ranging from formidable grizzlies to stately herds of caribou. Um, the intensity of the summer's midnight sun and spectacle of winter northern lights are all a part of the picture. 
The interior is the original home of Alaska's Athabascan, again, I apologize for mispronunciation, people, gold miners, farmers, and fur trappers later discovered the riches of this region. Geography. So the interior of Alaska is a region of mountains, valleys, rivers, and lakes. The Alaska Range, the Yukon, China, Tanana Rivers have challenged and rewarded explorers, prospectors, and adventurers for generations. Taiga forests and tundra make up much of the landscape. Roads have been laid through the valleys, along rivers, and across the broad plains. Okay, history. So again, it's always good to learn about the history of the places that you're going to send your clients. Prior to the gold rush of the late 1800s, the only Western culture to see the interior of Alaska consisted of a few Russian fur hunters and Hudson's Bay trappers. The Athabascan uh, people, however, have called this region home for thousands of years. With the gold rush came prospects who followed uh, every river, creek, and stream looking for the precious metal and settling into gold camps or supply centers. The communities of Eagle, Chicken, and Fairbanks were established this way. Then air travel, rail travel between Seward. Oops, sorry. Okay. My software failed. I don't know what that means. Turn that off. Jeez. What's going on? Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Let me turn my phone off. It's not even letting me turn the sound off. I don't know what's going on with my phone. Okay. Okay. Um, air travel between Seward and... Sorry, guys. Okay. Rick! <laughs> oh. Never mind. It's my it's my uh, watch phone. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. I figured it out. Thank you. Will you turn on the fan here, please? Sorry. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Which one are we on? I had to register. Interior. Yes. Thank you. All right, Elizabeth. And we just started, so it's interior. All right. So air travel, rail travel between Seward, Anchorage, and Fairbanks, and the construction of the Alaska Highway opened the region commence commerce like never before. Goods could be received more efficiently. Coal and gold could be exported more easily. The construction around the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System brought more people, money, and development into the region. Tourism has been a part of the region's economy since the mid-1900s, and the improved access helped open the doors to growing number of visitors. How about getting around in Alaska, okay? All roads lead to the interior, so do the, so do the train tracks, air route routes, and rivers. Much of the interior is accessible by the road system, which is experienced in some manner by most visitors who come to this region of Alaska in the summer as part of an organized tour or as independent travelers. The George Parks Highway links Fairbanks and Denali and continues on to Anchorage. Uh, Fairbanks is linked to Valdez and Wrangell Street, St. Elias, sorry, National Park, and preserved uh, via the Richardson Highway, which also connects with the Alaska Highway into Canada. Paved and gravel roads lead to small towns off the main road system. However, services can be limited. So cars and RVs can be rented in Fairbanks. Motorcycles and long-distance bikes are frequently seen on the road as well. The Alaska Railway Railroad runs year-round with daily summer service between Fairbanks and Anchorage, including a stop at Denali National Park and Preserve and the community Takitna. For the true independent traveler, in winter there is weekend service between Fairbanks and Anchorage, flag stops where passengers request to get off or flag down the train to get back on, are available between Takitna and Hurricane. Typically, there is only one northbound and one southbound train, okay, in the winter each weekend. Your clients might consider flying one way and taking the train the other. Refer to the Alaska Railwood Railroad website for schedules. And again, if you're joining us for the first time, when you click on these, it'll take you into another field, another program, another flyer. And a lot of people will save them, you know, information like on folders, binders, et cetera. So keep that in mind. 
All right, for schedules and more information, Fairbanks Airport welcomes flights from around the world, including summer charters from Germany. There's a daily scheduled service from around Alaska and the rest of the U.S. Air taxi services offer flights to the smaller interior and far north communities, as well as to remote backcountry sites. The rivers have historically played a large part in interior Alaska transportation with goods and people being delivered up and down the river systems by paddle wheel, street steamers, and other river boats. Today, your clients can experience the river travel. Uh, tour options exist in Fairbanks and Eagle, and operators offer float trips throughout the region. Okay, so how's the climate? Is it freezing there? The interior tends to get much warmer in the summer months than other regions in the state due to its dry climate. It also sees the biggest extreme in temperature change in the winter, with temperatures dipping as low as third negative, negative 35 degrees, guys, okay? All right, how about accommodations? Where are we going to put our clients? While there is a great variety of accommodations in Fairbanks, from B&Bs to private campgrounds, national uh, chain motels, first-class hotels, and river front lodges, smaller communities have more limited choices and may be seasonal. Reservations are always recommended in busy summer season in the Denali area. The reservations are a must. Demand is high and the season is short. Campers may have more flexibility, but even here, reservations, where possible, can help avoid disappointment. Remind your clients traveling to the interior region in winter that their hosts will most likely offer northern lights wake up. That's what I want to do. Wake up calls. If requested, the hotel staff will contact guests when northern lights are visible, something not to be missed even at two o'clock in the morning, okay? So again, something to sell to your client. You wanna see the Northern Lights? Come check it out. How about dining? Fast food, fine dining in Fairbanks to historic roadhouses on the road system. Your clients will eat well. Your clients might consider trying a local specialty. How about reindeer, domesticated caribou sausage, the salmon bait and dinner theater style re review, review, review in Fairbanks welcomes visitors in the summer, as do dinner theaters in Denali, at Denali. All right, entertainment. What is considered entertainment is truly up to the individual. Be sure you know what your clients are looking for so you can make the appropriate recommendation and reservations. For those interested in song and dance reviews and dinner theater, there are performances at Denali National Park and Preserve and at Pioneer Park in Fairbanks. Fairbanks is the venue um, in the interior for local fine arts. A symphony orchestra, world-renowned theatrical and musical performances perform year-round. And for other options, call the local visitor bureau to see what is happening while your clients are in the area. The TravelAlaska.com website also lists events throughout the year in each area. You also have Fairbanks uh, for shopping. Okay, who doesn't love shopping? Me. You need money, right? <laughs> Fairbanks has shopping on all levels, from large stores and malls to museum gift shops and galleries. The visitor can buy a variety of items from t-shirts, hats, and mugs to fine quality handcrafted art. There are roadhouses, gift shops along the road, and smaller communities and villages. Your clients may even meet the artists themselves. Specialties of the area include birch baskets, beaded moccasins, authentic Athabascan crafts. Tell your clients to look for the silver hand. We learned about this last training. The silver hand, Alaska made and Alaska grown logos discussed in module one to show the items are authentic and made in Alaska, okay? What to pack? What are your clients going to bring? Well, prepare for the season. Dress in layers is the best advice. Give your clients when it comes to packing for the interior. Good walking shoes are a must. Comfort is crucial. Bring sunglasses year round. It is warm in summer, very cold in winter. Good clothing selection is important. Plan and pack accordingly. Plenty of stores in Fairbanks for your clients to pick up anything they may have forgotten. Okay. All right, let's watch this short video. Again, a lot of times you have to click on everything to consider that you've completed the course. So make sure you go ahead and click on it. Welcome to Alaska's Interior, 
where there's lots of room for those looking for adventure. Let's start at the top. You may know it as Mount McKinley, but in Alaska, we call it Denali, the Great One. And it's easy to see why. At just over 20,000 feet, it's the tallest peak in North America. Flight scene tours are available from Talkeetna, just a two and a half hour drive from Anchorage. You can even land on a glacier and have yourself a summer snowball fight. The Great One is the centerpiece of Denali National Park. Open from mid-May through Labor Day, access to the park is by bus. At any point along the way, you can stop and hike your way through Denali's six million acres of untamed wilderness. While in Denali, you can try your hand at some river rafting. Everything from an easy float for the beginner to the ultimate thrill of class four whitewater. If a slower pace is more your speed, then enjoy the interior's excellent sport fishing. Arctic grayling, Dolly Varden, pike and trout can be found in the region's many lakes and streams. With more than 21 hours of daylight at the height of the summer, you can fish all day long and then some. Traveling 120 miles north of Denali, you reach the interior's largest city, Fairbanks, a modern city of 100,000 that blossoms with a vibrant array of arts and cultural attractions. Start your visit at the University of Alaska Museum of the North, where you'll find an extensive collection of Alaska Native artifacts. Local tours give you a chance to explore the area's gold rush history for yourself. You can even try your own hand at panning for gold and traveled down the river aboard a sternwheeler, just like the prospectors did at the turn of the century. After a day of discovery, there's nothing better than a good meal at one of more than 200 restaurants. Alaska's interior, whether you want to get above it all or get away from it all, you'll find what you're looking for in the heart of Alaska. All right. Next. <clears throat> All right, so Denali National Park and Preserve Region. Anybody been here? Uh, Denali is the Athabascan name, meaning the high one. Denali is the tallest peak in North America, 20,310 feet. The entrance is located on the Parks Highway, 120 miles south of Fairbanks. 230 miles north of Anchorage is easy to get to by road and train. An airstrip is located nearby for Healy for air taxi service and flight um, in Healy for air taxi service and flight scene. People travel to the park to see its wildlife experience and vast landscape and get a chance to spot Denali. How they do this depends on the visitor package tours. Often, um, often provide one or two nights at the park and an afternoon or morning tour into the park. Your clients may want more time to experience more of the region. Most of the accommodations for the park are located in the parks on the park's highway outside the entrance of the national park and up to 10 miles north and south of the entrance, including the community of Healy. Visitors staying outside of the park at these lodges, hotels, and cabins, campgrounds, B&Bs should be aware that Denali is not visible from the park entrance. On a clear day, the mountain can be seen from various points within the park and from some places in South Central Alaska and the interior. There are a wide range of activities in and around the park. Some of these include dog sledding, rides, demonstrations, hiking trails, rafting on the Nanana, river, flight scene, off-road experiences on the historic Stampede Trail, and much more. Again, check out TravelAlaska.com or the Denali National Park and Preserve website for more info. How do we get there? People come to Denali National Park for the wildlife and accessible wilderness. Wildlife sightings, while not guaranteed, are frequent, and visitors may report they've seen the big five. What are they? This may be a test question, so pay attention. Brown bears, caribou, doll, sheep, sheep, moose, and the wolf. Also are found fox, wolverine, lynx, and more. So these are the big five, guys, okay? So pay attention to that. The 91-mile-long road into the park travels to Wonder Lake and Katishna. 
a small area with a gold mining history, a few remote wilderness lodges. The road is open from late May through mid-September, weather and road conditions permitting. Except for the first and last week of the summer season, private vehicles are not permitted more than 15 miles into the national park. A road lottery is held each year for a chance to drive as far as the road is open during the last few days of the season in late September. Shuttle buses, converted school buses, travel the length of the road to the visitor center with passengers able to get on and off along the way. Guided short nature tours travel 20 miles into the park to Savage River and an all-day narrated bus tour travel to Takat River, 53 miles each way. Tours into the park are often included in package tours. If not, reservations for the chosen tour should be well in advance of your client's arrival. Hikers, bicyclists, and in-winter dog sleds are also allowed on the road. There are many areas on the road for wildlife and scenery viewing. Hiking trails are marked in some cases, and in other cases, a hiker is encouraged to find their own way. Anyone traveling into the backcountry is required to register with the park service at the park headquarters. And a view of the back county, um, country, back country safety and skills video. Okay, and view. For more information um, on shuttle services, camping and hiking, refer to the Denali National Park and Preserve website. Again, click there for more info. Most of the park's 6 million acres, 2.4 million hectares, of wilderness are inaccessible by road. This can make flight seeing by fixed wing aircraft or helicopter an attractive option for touring the park. Again, share this with your clients, get them, you know, an adventure, you know, that they've never experienced, right? All right, so here's some attractions. Again, you can take the screenshot or, or save it. The Alaska Range, a 400 mile long mountain range running in the arc east to west with Denali, its highest peak. Birds year-round residents include ravens, great horned owls, three species of targaman, Denali National Park Headquarters, Park Administrative Center, open to the public, provides detailed park information, maps, natural history display, open dates, May 15th each year, closing in mid-September, roughly two weeks after Labor Day, okay? So again, keep that in mind. The Denali Road, a 91-mile road traverses the park. Dog sledding, that's another cool thing to recommend. 30-minute program touring kennels and visiting Alaskan Huskies. Um, Eielson Visitor Center, located 66 miles into the park on the Denali Park Road, provides cultural, natural resources, information displays, and services to the backpacker. Uh, Katishna Mining District. So at the west end of the road into Denali National Park and Preserve is Katishna a private uh, land holding inside the National Park boundary, which was once the center of an active gold mining district. Gold is still mined on a small scale, and there are several luxury wilderness lodges in the area, including the original roadhouse. Natural wonders, okay, so pay attention to this. The Savage River, Holocomb Pass, Outer Range, Wonder Lake, Sanctuary River, and Mudlow, um, Mudrow Glacier, to name a few. So things to see. Stampede Road, mining road with access outside the park used by backcountry travelers. See Healy. And then wildlife residents, again, caribou, grizzly bears, wolves, moose, doll sheep, lynx, marmots, fox, and snowshoe hares, to name a few. All right. How about the Alaska Highway Region, also known as the Alcan? abbreviated version of its original name, Alaska Canada Highway. Several of the smaller communities in the interior, as well as spectacular roadways are accessible by the Alaska Highway. By taking the Alaska Highway, your clients can experience some of the interior's amazing scenery, smaller communities, and meet some of the unique people that make the region special. Delta Junction, official end of the Alaska Highway as it joins the existing Richardson Highway to complete the route to Fairbanks, home to several historic roadhouses, including Rika's Roadhouse. The area presents a picturesque rural setting complemented by spectacular views of the Alaska Range. Clear days allow views of Mount Hayes, Mount Moffat, and the Delta River, which is the town's namesake. 
Delta Junction, developed into an agricultural region, is home to over 30 large farms and more than 160 small farms. Delta Junction offers the first view of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline for visitors coming up the Alaska Highway from Canada. The best view is about nine miles north of town where the pipeline crosses the Tanana River. Pump station number nine is located about eight miles south of town on the Richardson Highway. The location, Delta Junction is located at the convergence of the Richardson and Alaska Highways approximately 95 miles southeast of Fairbanks. The city developed along the east bank of the Delta River, south of its junction with the, with the Tanana River. Okay, access. So you can get there by road via the Richardson Highway from Fairbanks or Glen Allen and the Alaska Highway from Tok and Canada. Commuter air service out of Fairbanks is also available. Accommodations and amenities, few hotel motels, several B&Bs, campgrounds, there is also a small select selection of restaurants. Um, again, here's some attractions for to share with your clients. So you have the Alaska Homestead Historical Museum, six miles east of town on the Alaska Highway. See a homestead farm, large collection of early farming equipment. How about barley fields, popular migration stop for up to 200,000 sandhill cranes. Spring and fall migrations offer spectacular viewing of the cranes as well as geese and many other waterfowl. Clearwater State Recreation Site, fishing, camping, boat access to the Tanana, Tanana, <laughs> and Good Paster River. Uh, Big Delta State Historical Park includes historic Rika's Roadhouse, built in 1910, and a number of other historic outbuildings, facilities, and Athabascan artifacts. You have the Delta Bison Sanctuary, 90,000 acre sanctuary with more than 500 free roaming bison created in 1980 south of the Alaska Highway off the Richardson Highway. You have Delta Junction Visitor Center in the triangle, the area where Alaska Highway merges into Richardson Highway. The Visitor Center has historical and wildflower displays. Just outside is the large white milepost for mile 1422 of the Alcan, marking the end of the famous highway. Quartz Lake State Recreation Area, camping, boating, fishing for rainbow trout and silver salmon. Sullivan Roadhouse relocated across the visitor center building 1905 is one of the last remaining original roadhouses from the Valdez to Fairbanks trail and is an excellent free museum of interior pioneer artifacts. And then you have Trans-Alaska Pipeline. A section of the pipeline is visible over the Tanana River. Tanana. <laughs> All right, how about talk? Located 125 miles from the Canadian border between the Tanana River and Alaska Range. From its beginnings as a construction camp during the building of the Alaska Highway in 1942, Talk has grown into a primary trade and service center for the area, including several Athabascan uh, villages. Talk boasts the title of sled dog capital of Alaska because so many of its residents are involved in some way with dogs and dog mushing. Talk is the only town in Alaska that the highway traveler must pass through twice, once when arriving in Alaska and once on leaving. From Talk, your clients can drive 254 miles via the Talk cutoff to Valdez and Prince William Sound, 328 miles via the Talk Cutoff and Glen Highway to Anchorage, or continue on the Alaska and Richardson Highway 206 miles to Fairbanks. The Taylor Highway heads north out of Talk to Chicken, Eagle, and provides access to Yukon Charlie Rivers National Preserve. Uh, location, Talk is located at the junction of the Alaska Highway and the Talk cutoff to the Glen Highway, 125 miles from the Canadian border. Access, primarily, uh, primarily highway with commuter air service from Fairbanks, three days a week. Accommodations and amenities, several motel hotels and B&Bs, as well as many RV parks and a small selection of restaurants. There are many hotel motels available in winter, but fewer restaurants. Okay, attractions to see. Talk Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, Alaska Visitor Center. Offers statewide travel information, community displays, free coffee, open year round, 
the public lands information center, museum displays, wildlife film, trip planning information on state and national parks and campgrounds, as well as the Alaska Marine Highway System. How about chicken? Anybody visit chicken? Chicken is a well-known mining community whose name is legend. Early miners could not agree on the spelling of Katargavigan, a local chicken-like bird whose name is pronounced Tomigan. So they decided to call it chicken because they knew how to spell that. Small community lies in the 40 mile river basin, indigenous home to the Han Kuchin people. It is less than a mile, 1.6 kilometers from the Mosquito Fort, which is one of several watercraft entries into the 40 mile wild um, and scenic river system. Uh, chicken is located 66 miles north of Tetlin Junction, Alaska Highway mile post 1301 on the Taylor Highway. From Dawson City in the Yukon Territory, it is 109 miles via the top of the World and Taylor Highways to Chicken. Access here, road access via the Taylor Highway from Tetlin Junction and the top of the World Highway from Dawson City, Yukon Territory, air charters from Tok or Fairbanks and air tours from China Hot Springs, custom and package motor coaches, tours, shuttle service from Fairbanks, Talk and Dawson City. Where can they stay? There's a couple campgrounds, cabins, an espresso cappuccino bar, saloon, and two cafes. So not a lot going on there, right? You have the Chicken Creek Hotel built in 1906, later served as a school where Anne Tisha Purdy taught before writing her highly acclaimed book, Tisha. Pedro Led or Pedro Dredge originally mined in the Fairbanks area before it's moved to Chicken in 1959. The dredge is one of the few dredges in the state open to the public. How about Eagle, one of the better preserved boom towns of the Alaska mining era? Eagle is a quaint hamlet of log cabins and clapboard houses located at the north end of Taylor Highway and just six miles west of the Alaska-Canada border. Eagle overlooks the Yukon River below Eagle Bluff. The Athabascans uh, established the original settlement. A trading post was built in the early 1880s. Eagle reached its peak at the turn of the 20th century when it boasts a population of more than 1,500 residents, some of whom went so far as to call their town the Paris of the North. Eagle is said to have the state's largest museum system, boasting five restored turn-of-the-century buildings. His, remember, that may be a test question. Historically, an important riverboat landing, Eagle is still a popular jumping-off point for Yukon River travelers. Summer float trips from Eagle Downriver through the Yukon Charlie Rivers National Preserve to the community of Circle are a popular activity. Top of the World Highway is a 79 mile long highway beginning at the junction with the Taylor Highway in Alaska, traveling east to its terminus at the ferry terminal in West Dawson, YT, on the western banks of the Yukon River. The highway has been in existence since at least 1955 and is only open during the summer months. Okay, so remember that. These are long ones, huh? Ooh, this one's a kind of short one. All right. Denali Highway Region, um, 133 miles, uh, rough gravel road traveling just south of the Alaska Range. It does travel between Cantwell on the Parks Highway at the edge of Denali National Park Preserve east to Paxson on the Richardson Highway. This is not to be confused with the road that goes into Denali National Park and Preserve. RVs, cars, and bicycles frequent the road, but a couple of tour operators also include it in their itineraries for its scenic quality. Just east of Paxson lies the Gokana River. Spawning salmon may be seen from mid to late summer. These salmon are protected, but the region offers other excellent fishing opportunities for trout and grayling. Uh, views along the road can be stunning. Weather permitting, your clients can look west and see Denali. Wildlife can be sometimes spotted from the road, moose, caribou, bear, and waterfowl. Accommodations are limited to a couple roadhouses, cabins, and camping. Scenery is spectacular and is a great way to connect the parks, highway, and Richardson Highway. And then Paxson is a community of Paxson is located on the shores of the Paxson Lake. Near the intersection of Denali Highway and Richardson Highway, 
Paxson is a small town with lots of cabins along year along among the year round residents. Plenty of dog mushers. Uh, your clients uh, may see kennels full of sled dogs if they stop here. A large lodge is located where the two highways meet and offers rooms for rent, a restaurant, gas, RV parking, some groceries, but otherwise services are fairly limited. All right, Western region. Ooh, another long one. Okay, Western region. So you have Cantwell, just south of the Denali National Park and preserve on the Georgia Park Highway. Small town of Catwell provides visitor services as well as access to the Denali Highway. Named after the Catwell River, the original name for the Nanana River, Catwell was established in the mid-1920s as a railroad construction camp. Later became a flag stop for trains traveling between Anchorage and Fairbanks. How about Healy? Community closest to Denali National Park and Preserve, Healy was settled in the early 1900s by prospectors, trappers, and commercial hunters. A railroad construction camp was built nearby in 1920, and Healy soon in, transformed into a fully-fledged railroad town. Coal mines were also developed nearby. In 1922, workers completed a four-mile spur road that allowed large quantities of coal to be shipped north to Fairbanks from the Centrana mine. In 1942, this mine was purchased by the Usabelli Coal Company, which today extracts 2 million tons per year of coal from Alaska's only commercial coal mine. With its location on the Parks Highway in proximity to the Alaska Railroad, Healy serves highway travelers and Denali National Park and Preserve visitors alike. Um, Healy is 11 miles north of the entrance of Denali National Park and Preserve on the George Parks Highway and 78 miles southwest of Fairbanks. You can get there by road via the Parks Highway from Anchorage to the south of um, to the south or Fairbanks to the north. Air taxi service available in spring and summer. Accommodations, there's a handful of hotels, motels, B&Bs, campgrounds, RV parks, along with several lodges and cabins. A few restaurants, auto repair, grocery stores are also available. How about the attractions? So you have historic Stampede Trail. Many years ago, this trail led to the Stampede Mine, once Alaska's prime producer of antimony. Much of the trail is now within Denali National Park and Preserve, though its first 25 to 30 miles are outside the park. Your clients should be informed that only the first few miles of the trail are well graded. Beyond that, the Stampede Trail is largely overgrown and challenging to follow. This trail gained much attention from the book movie Into the Wild. Several tour companies that operate tours on the Stampede Trail. Usabelli Coal Mine, daily one-hour tours throughout the summer, including the Quality Control Office, Main Shop, Warehouse, Coal, coal Hopper, and Crusher. Conditions per permitting, the tour also includes 15 million dragline boom, 4.3 million pound shoveling machine with a 33-yard bucket, which scoops an average of 24,000 BYDs of earth in 24 hours. Nanana, um, on the parks of Highway 65 miles south of Fairbank, Nanana lies on the banks of the Tanana and Nanana rivers. Town's name is taken from the Athabascan word Nananiana, meaning point of camping between two rivers. Nanana was the site of the roadhouse until it was chosen as its base um, for building and northern portion of the Alaska Railroad in 1916. Besides its historical charm, Alaska Athabascan cultural richness, Nanana also has the Nanana Ice Classic. Lottery tradition began in um, 1917 by Alaska Railroad surveyors. Alaskans all over the state and participants from around the world try to guess the exact time of ice breakup on the frozen Tanana River. The first movement of the river ice in spring, mid-April to early May, maybe test question, is detected by a tripod, which actually has four legs placed 300 feet from shore. When the ice moves, dislodging the tripod, a cord attached to the clock on shore stops the clock, and the exact time on the clock determines the winner. Besides this one event, there's no lottery or casinos in the state. 
That's kind of cool, right? All right, the location, Nanana is located 65 miles south of Fairbanks on the Parks Highway near the junction of the Tanana and Nanana Rivers. You can get their um, primarily highway and air taxi service, a couple motels, hotels, b and and RV park, and a handful of restaurants. The attractions there, Alaska State Railroad Museum, railroad memorabilia, and lo local artifacts located in the Nanana train station, which was built in 1923, extensively restored in 1988 and is now on the National Register of Historic Site, Historical Sites. A railroad monument commemorates when President Warren G. Harding drove in the gold spike marking the completion of the Alaska Railroad. Nanana Visitor Center, a log cabin with a sawed roof planted with colorful flowers during the summer. Kind of cool. St. Mark's Mission Church, built in 1905, recently restored to its original splendor. The pews are embellished with handcraft, handmade carvings, and the altar cloth is made of moose hide decorated with indigenous beadwork. And then Taku Chief River Tug, once pushed barges along the Tanana River. All right, we're getting close to test time, guys. All right, Fairbanks region. All right, Fairbanks area is the heart of the interior with each community, offering something unique to your clients, encouraging them to linger a little longer. Then travel by rail, river, road, or air to explore the rest of Alaska. From here, it is easy for your clients to head north to the Arctic, south to some of the most beautiful national parklands in the country, and southeast through the Yukon Territory into Alaska's Inside Passage. Fairbanks, perched on the edge of the Arctic wilderness and the banks of Chenna River, Fairbanks is also known as Alaska's Golden Heart City, as much for the warmth of the people as for its location in the heart of the interior. In 1902, Felix Pedro found gold in the region and thousands of prospectors swarmed the area in search of the mother lobe. Fairbanks quickly became and still is the trade and transportation center for the interior and far north regions. Frontier spirit that helped create Fairbanks is strong today and is part of what makes Alaska's third largest city a thriving community ready to share its modern amenities with visitors year round. Whether your clients are arriving as part of a package tour or they are traveling independently, they will find a range of dining options and comfortable, well-appointed accommodations and entertaining educational activities and attractions. Popular activities include gold panning, river boating on the Chenna River. Long days of summer provide many hours for recreational pursuits. Winter features numerous celebrations and northern lights illuminate the night sky. Uh, location. Uh, located centrally in the heart of Alaska, Fairbanks is the gateway for travel to the Brooks Range and Arctic Coastal Plain, and to communities such as Fort Yukon, Cold, Coldfoot, Bettles, Anaktavuk Pass, and Nome. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is easily accessible by small plane, and the famous Dalton Highway, also known as North Slope Hall Road, can be traveled by those with a thirst for adventure. Access to Fairbanks is easily assessed by plane, rail, or road. Daily jet service is available for many U.S. cities, offers scheduled or charter service to Europe. Alaska Railroad connects Fairbanks to Denali National Park and Preserve, Anchorage, Whittier, and Seward. The Alaska Highway offers road access via Canada. The Richardson Highway links Fairbanks to Valdez, Prince William Sound, and George Parks Highway links Fairbanks to Anchorage. Accommodation and amenities, plenty of accommodations available in Fairbanks with a wide array in options in and around the surrounding areas, as well as camp campgrounds and RV parks. Fairbanks can easily host meetings, mid-sized to small convention and conferences. So attractions, you have package tours and fit travel. Our Aurora Borales, generally visible from September until the beginning of April, average are 240 nights per year. Church of the Immaculate Conception. It was built in 1904, has ornate gold rush decor. Creamers Field Migratory Bird Refuge, excellent place to view migrating birds, particularly sandhill cranes. Dog sled races, distance and sprint, the Yukon Quest International Sled Dog Race, known as the world's toughest 
run in February. In March, okay, remember this, the Open North American Championship are held and limited North American Championship, uh, which attracts top sprint mushers from North America and beyond. You have the Georgeson Botanical Gardens, part of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, largest botanical garden in Alaska. How about Hot Springs? They have them east and north of Fairbanks. Aurora Ice Museum located in Chenna Hot Springs. The Large Animal Research uh, Station, part of UAF with muskoff, caribou, and reindeer. Pioneer Park, a park with Gold Rush Town Museums, historic uh, cabins, other buildings and structures, including the SS Nanana Stern Wheeler. The first Episcopal uh, Church and the home of Judge James Wickersham were relocated to create the feeling of a turn of the century town. The Alaska Salmon Bank is also located here. Trans-Alaska Pipeline, 800 miles oil pipeline sections visible with inter interpretive signage. And then the University of Alaska Museum of the North. Agricultural cultural landmark, inspired by Alaska inside and out, the Gallery of Alaska tells stories about Alaska's people, places, and wildlife. Multimedia programs, exhibits of mastodons and gold, as well as museum store gallery audio tours in english german japanese um, are available ba -ba -ba! and the circle is located on the steeps highway about 125 miles northeast of fairbanks circle was originally a mining settlement now the small community is made up of a log buildings offers good access for yukon river kayakers and river rafters Esther was originally a gold mining camp on Esther Creek with the first claim stake in February 1903. In 1987, the gold camp was designated the Esther Camp uh, Historic District by the National Register of Historic Places. And then the North Pole, everyone knows North Pole, right? Located 12 miles south of Fairbanks on the Alaska Highway, North Pole receives thousands of letters for Santa Claus every year. Regional attractions include views of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline and Santa Claus House with its gift shop and reindeer, Prancer, Common, and Cupid, who are all residents year-round when they are not helping deliver presents. Kind of cute, right? All right. And then Northwest, uh, Northeast Interior Region. Um, get ready for the test, guys. It's after this. Uh, Alaska is accessible by small plane boat in the warmer months. In the winter months for the adventurous um, snowmobile on an ice road river, which was when frozen are used as roads. Your clients can travel above the Arctic Circle to experience an authentic Athabascan village. In the winter, some of the best Northern Lights viewing anywhere. Fort Yukon, one of the older settlements in Alaska, remains the largest primarily, primarily Athabascan village in Alaska. At the further north tip of the Yukon River, it is just north of the Arctic Circle and is located beneath the Aurora Borealis Belt, providing some of the best Aurora viewing anywhere in the world. Okay, so remember that Fort Yukon, okay? Uh, mentioned in Jack London's books and home to the first climbers of Denali, Fort Yukon is an interesting historic village. It is located 145 miles northeast of Fairbanks and eight miles of the Arctic Circle at the confluence of the Yukon and Porcupine Rivers. Uh, scheduled air service from Fairbanks and charter service year round or by barge or boat during the summer months. You can get a lodge or a B&B a &B there. And the attractions there is the Dingy Zhuangjit Museum. Displays excellent examples of old and new beadwork created by the Grinchin at the Baskins. And then of course, the Northern Lights, spectacular displays of lights against the Arctic winter sky, September through March, conditions permitting. All right, everybody ready for the test? Let's go. Loading up, I'm gonna go ahead and pause recording. All right, so we now move on to our next region. Okay, so again, want to make sure everybody passes. Don't want to leave anybody behind. Hopefully we can finish this one up and then uh, we'll take 
um, go on to the next one. So um, we'll finish this one. It looks like it hopefully probably be a long one also. But um, again, if you can't stay, I have it recorded. Um, but hopefully we'll get through this and then we'll start on the next one on uh, next Wednesday. OK. All right. Let's go ahead and stop recording on this one. Um, I started the recording again. Yeah, so I'm recording. I just I just pause the recording when we do the test. All right, so now we're going into the Southwest region. OK, so few places on Earth compare with the wonders of Southwest Alaska. How about brown bears amble along the hills and plains? More than 240 bird species inhabit the Southwest region of Alaska. The region's terrain ranges from landscape of volcanoes in Kat, um, Katmai National Park and Preserve to the windswept Aleutian Islands that make a nearly 1,100 mile sweep towards Asia. This region's vast scenery, wildlife, world record halibut and salmon and diverse bird life will attract your clients who are interested in getting off the beaten track for in-depth up close encounters with an Alaska truly less traveled. While very accessible, Southwest is its own destination, not something your clients will experience on their way to other destinations. Visitors travel to Southwest Alaska mostly for fishing, bear viewing, and the incredible diversity of bird species. You have geography. Southwest Alaska is just as large as Alaska's other regions. It is made up of six distinct regions of its own. The Kodiak um, Island Archipelago includes Kodiak and Afongak Islands, as well as varied terrain of mountains, tundra, rocky shoreline, spruce forests. The Alaska Peninsula follows the Aleutian Range, rising southwest of Anchorage to form the west side of Cook Inlet. Cook Inlet. Um, it is 550 miles long, includes seacoast, mountains, glaciers, volcanoes, marshy lowlands, and the largest lakes in Alaska. Barsheriff Lake, um, Iliamna Lake, and Lake Clark, Bristol Bay, is an area of freshwater salmon spawning streams flowing in the nearby rivers and bays, while the Yukon uh, Kuskoswim Delta region is a vast wetland broken only by the few low hills, occasional rivers, streams, and lakes. It stretches 200 miles inland and 250 miles north to south. The Aleutian chain is a chain of islands made of submerged mountains beginning more than 20,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. This mountain range runs from the Alaska mainland to more than 1,100 miles in the Pacific Ocean, with islands consisting of low rolling hills, Stark Cliffs, Dormant Volcanoes, the Pribilof Islands, St. Paul and St. George are small volcanic islands with tough treeless tundra, sea cliffs, and rocky beaches. Again, history. Indigenous people of Southwest Alaska have been in the region for at least 8,000 years. Uh, Russian traders um, arrived in um, Southwest Alaska uh, in the 1740s, searching for the fur seals, uh, sea otters, and other valuable animals. The first capital of Russian Alaska was established on Kodiak Island in 1792, at the same time the permanent settlement of um, in the Aleutians was founded. In the early 19th century, of the Russians moved their Alaska capital from Kodiak to Sitka. Okay, so they moved the capital then leaving behind the Russian Orthodox uh, faith, which remains the dominant religion in many communities today. During the Nome Gold Rush of 1898 and 1899, Unalaska became a favorite refueling stop for steamers carrying miners north and gold south. Over time, Unalaska and Kodiak became important commercial fishing bases, a uh, role still important today. The Aleutians, uh, were strategically important during World War II. Don't you like having a, um, a history class? <laughs> World War II and preventing Japanese invasion of the U.S. mainland in the 1940s, the U.S. Navy took over Dutch Harbor, the seaport that serves the town of Unalaska. 
Fearing a Japanese attack, the air raid came in the 1942. Uh, Japanese forces occupied the islands of Atu and Kiska near the western end of the Aleutians. Uh, traces of this air are still evident throughout the Aleutian Islands and Kodiak Island regions. How about Bristol Bay? It's grown into one of the premier sport fishing destinations in the world, as well as a busy commercial fishing ground. The Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Archipelago have seen a similar increase in tourism. Kodiak has become home to the largest commercial fishing fleet in the world. While Unalaska is home port to the globe's richest fishing fleet in terms of volume and value of the product landed, the rest of Southwest remains much as it has always been remote, untouched, and largely unseen by the rest of the world getting around, no overland links to the rest of the state with, and no roads outside the immediate vicinity of the larger towns. Southwest Alaska is reached by scheduled or charter air service, usually from Anchorage or the Kenai Peninsula. Larger communities of the region have scheduled jet service. Smaller communities have scheduled air taxis. Advance reservations are essential for the short summer season. You have the Alaska State Ferry, uh, which provides year-round service to Kodiak and in the summer months brings service two times a month along the uh, Aleutian Islands. Refer to the Alaska uh, Marine Highway website for up-to-date ferry schedules and rates. As an option, visitors can take the ferry one way and fly the other in order to enjoy the wildlife and remote communities that most visitors will never see. Some cruise ships call on Southwest Alaska ports either on repositioning cruises to the Far East or as part of a naturalist cruises traveling between Nome and Anchorage. Day cruises and charter boats are available for wildlife and photography excursions. Your clients do need to know that seas can be rougher than in other waterways, even in the relative calm of the summer and should plan accordingly. Winter travel is almost exclusively by air. Ice roads formed when the rivers freeze up also provide access between communities via trucks, snow machines, and dog sleds. When planning your clients' trips to Southwest Alaska, you are well advised to include weather days on either side of the Southwest expedition, just in case the traveler is weathered in or out of their destination. Be sure to include suggestions for these unplanned days so you can make alternative arrangements for your clients in the event of weather days are not needed, okay? Dining. Larger communities have fast food options and choice of sit-down restaurants, including ethnic eateries, coffee shops, and cafes, and very limited fine dining. Smaller communities may have a small grocery or supply store. Visitors should carry snacks and water just in case they are delayed or miss limited store hours. However, encourage your clients to purchase something locally whenever possible. It will give them an opportunity to contribute to the local economy, interact with locals, and possibly make a new friend. Many wilderness lodges include meals in their pricing, so obtain Information about dining options to include with your clients' documents through the local visitors, bureau, and accommodation providers, and special dietary needs may be met with advance notice. And then shopping, almost every town in the village has stores or gift, um, or gift counters selling local arts and crafts or souvenirs. Hotels typically have an in-house gift store, usually carry items from the local artists. If there are no apparent gift stores or counters, your clients should ask locally, who has items to sell? Not everyone takes credit cards, so it is um, always, sorry, <laughs> a good idea to have some cash for these types of purchases. Baskets made of locally gathered grasses, masks, Eskimo yo-yos, often made of fur, leather, sinew, Ivory or Balin are some items to look for. When buying from a store, always look for Made in Alaska Silver Hand Program logos that we covered in module one to be sure that they were crafted in Alaska. Let's watch a short video. Thank you. 
right. Dun, dun, dun. Next, uh, Yukon. All right. So a broad wet wetlands lying between the Yukon and Cusco rivers, the <laughs> Yukon uh, Delta is one of the most populated rural areas in Alaska. Known locally as the YK, about 25,000 um, Eskimo people make their home in this region and depend on natural resources to support an active subst subsistence way of life. Much of the wetlands are part of the 20 million acre, 8 million hectares, Yukon Delta National Re Wildlife Refuge, the largest wildlife refuge in the United States. Although most noted for waterfowl and other migratory bird habitat, the refuge also supports musk ox, caribou, brown and black bears, wolves, and moose. Hundreds of miles, kilometers of rivers and streams provide spawning and rearing habitat for 44 species of fish, including all five Pacific salmon species. The Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center is located in Bethel. Bethel, Bethel. Visitor facilities in this region are limited, but the larger villages and towns of Bethel and Antioch have hotels or inns. Local guide services provide air transportation to areas of the wildlife refuge. Bethel, or Bethel, again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, a commercial center for the area. Bethel is located at the mouth of the Kaskokwim River, 40 miles inland from the Bering Sea, 400 miles west of Anchorage. Originally settled in the 1800s, it was known as Mamtrakalamut, uh, meaning Smokehouse Village. The first trading post was established in the 1870s. Today, Bethel is the largest bush rural community in Alaska and the transportation center for dozens of native villages in the Yukon uh, Kuskokwim Delta. Majority of the population is Alaska native or part native. Traditional Yupik Eskimo practices and language remain predominant in the area. A Yupik trading center in the 1870s, Bethel is still a marketplace for Yupik ivory carvings, baskets, and other craft items. Bethel is located in the mouth of the Kaskarim River, 40 miles inland from the Bering Sea, lies in the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge, 400 miles west of Anchorage. To get there, scheduled jet service from Anchorage and air taxi service connecting Aniak, Tillingham, St. Mary's, and many other rural communities. Uh, accommodations and amenities, several hotel motels, B&Bs and cottage, several restaurants, food, most convenience and supplies are available. Taxi service is also available. Attractions, you have the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Headquarters, Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center. Visitor information, natural history and wildlife displays illustrating activities available within the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, you have the Yucatarvik Bethel Visitor Center and Museum Annex means a place for people's things. It's part of the University of Alaska Fairbanks Kaskoyam Campus Cultural Center, offers exhibits of traditional native tools, clothing, collection of vintage photos, native art classes, and gift shops. You have the Yukon Delta National Re Wildlife Refuge. Uh, 20 million acreage is the largest wildlife refuge in the United States. Okay, remember that. Refuge uh, supports one of the most important shore bird nesting areas in terms of both density and species diversity, and one of the largest aggregations of wa water birds in the world. Spectacular, the spectacle takes place every spring as millions of ducks, geese, and other water birds return to the refuge to nest. The refuge also supports muskox, caribou, brown and black bears, wolves, and moose. Hundreds of miles of rivers and streams providing, provide spawning, rearing habitat for 44 species of fish, including the five Pacific salmon species. Very cool, huh? That'd be good, cool to see. Bristol Bay region, um, home the world's largest source of red salmon, also known as sockeye. The salmon are enticed by the area's rich freshwater spawning streams that flow into the nearby river and bays and support world-renowned spawning and harvesting of all five species of Pacific salmon, king, sockeye, silver, pink, and chum. 
as well as rainbow trout, arctic char, grayling, northern pipe, lake tout, trout, dolly varden, beluga whale, orca, killer whale. Sightings are common as they follow the salmon runs. The area is home to caribou, moose, bear, and walrus, as well as sage, small game such as beaver, porcupine, river otter, fox, and varied waterfowl. Uh, many cultures meet in this land, including Eskimos, Aleuts, and Athabascans. Traditional customs of the region, mixed Alaska indigenous cultures are still evident with local arts and crafts prominent in the region museums and visitor centers. Uh, visitors come to Bristol Bay year round for a variety of activities in the parklands. The remote sites that make up the area are accessed only by float plane or boat. Lodges, outfitters, and local airlines offer guided or unguided adventure opportunities. Visitor facilities are limited in local villages, but the larger villages and towns of Dillingham and Nanak have hotels or inns. Local guide services provide air transportation to remote areas of the region. Um, so here you have Tavia National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, 4.7 million acres, is that right? Um, land encompasses pristine rivers, clear mountain lakes, steep sloped mountains, salmon and trout fishing, birding, wildlife photography, river rafting, kayaking, hunting, draw people to this spectacular area. The rugged Auckland and Wood River Mountains are noteworthy for their scenic beauty. Tagiak offers some of the finest salmon and trout fishing in Alaska. The refuge has no roads, no established trails or campgrounds. Primary access to the refuge is by chartered aircraft or boats out of the communities of Dillingham, Bethel and King Salmon. All three communities have daily scheduled air service from Anchorage. There is a three-day camping limit on all rivers throughout Tagiak, and opportunities exist for guided and independent recreation. Visit the Tagiak National Wildlife Refuge website for more information and trip planning. Air taxi service and guides with permits for operating in the refuge can create a custom program for your clients' visits. The attractions there, you have Camp Pierce, one of only two regularly used land-based haulouts for Pacific walrus in North America. How cute. Up to 12,000 male walruses may haul out at one time. Endangered stellar sea lions harbor and spotted seals also use haulouts within the refuge. Walrus Island State Game Sanctuary, a group of seven craggy islands and their adjacent waters located in northern Bristol Bay. Walrus Island State Game Sanctuary is bet with world famous for its unique summer concentration of walruses. Best known among the walrus islands is Round Island, where each summer large number of male walruses haul out on exposed rocky beaches. Other wildlife on and around the sanctuary include stellar sea lions, harbor seals, orcas, gray humpback, and mink whales, red fox, and thousands of seabirds. Access to the sanctuary is by float plane out of Dillingham, connecting to an overnight expedition tour boat outside the community of Tagia. Wood Tikchik State Park, a uh, largest state park in the U.S. consisting of 1.6 million acres, and named for two separate systems of large interconnected clearwater lakes, spired peaks, high alpine valleys, deep V-shaped arms give the park a spectacular fjord like appearance on the western boundaries. The eastern portion looks out upon islands, gravel beaches, and the expansive tundra of the Nushashkak lowlands on the east. The Wood River Mountains are to the west. And then access. Wood Tik Tik has no war roads. Access is by air charter out of Dillingham and with daily commercial air service from Anchorage. Water access is from Dillingham via the Wood River. Several commercial sport fishing lodges are located on private property within the boundaries of the park. These lodges operate on a reservation basis only. The Dillingham Ranger Station has a complete list of commercial operators authorized to conduct business within the park. Boy, these are long ones, huh? Are you guys learning anything? It's like you guys are going to really be Alaska specialists after this, right? <laughs> All right, the peninsula's rich indigenous history spans more than 5,000 years. The maritime Aleut and Aleutik 
people depend on the sea for much of their food and livelihood. They have always been known for their extremely functional seaworthy kayaks or bidarkas and traditionally used them for sub subsistence hunting as well as transportation. Uh, their cultures were heavily influenced by the arrival of the Russians in the late 1700s and still today. Russian Orthodox churches are founded about every community. Russian foods and words remain a part of the daily life. Today, scheduled air service is available from Anchorage to Liliamna, King Salmon, or Naknek. For access to the region's fly-in fishing lodges. Air taxis provide service to all points around the peninsula. And then you have the Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge. 3.5 million acres uh, refuge, Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge, known for its fishing, birding, and land and sea mammal wildlife viewing opportunities. It's accessible by Alaska State Ferry via the Gateway Community of Chicknit. Next, the Peninsula Katma and Anita. Okay, it's, um, the Katma National Park and Preserve, established as a national monument in 1918 to preserve the valley, valley of 10,000 smokes. A 40 mile, 100, okay, ash flow deposited by the Vol Navarapta volcano in 1912. The name was derived from the thousands of small holes and cracks in the ash deposits that gave gas and steam from the heated groundwater. Over the years, protection of the area's brown bears became equally important and Katma was designated a national park and preserve in 1980. Uh, Katma National Park encompasses 4.7 million acres of pristine wilderness on the Alaska Peninsula across the Kodiak Island. Wild rivers and streams, rugged coastline, broad green glacial hewn valleys, active glaciers, volcanoes, brown bears characterize Katmai. Katmai contains Alganak Wild River, um, Anayakchak National Monument and Preserve, a 30 mile volcanic uh, caldera, and a very large population of brown bears. 14 active volcanoes lie within the park today. And the Alaska Volcano Observatory operates 19 monitoring stations there. Tours are available through the Valley of 10,000 Smokes, and visitors may also hike the Valley of 10,000 Smokes independently. Your clients should know the summer temperatures range from 44 degrees to 63, which frequent high winds and rain. Insects can be intense, and head nets are, are recommended. Access park headquarters located in King Salmon can be reached by the commercial airline. Brooks Camp, a lodge and campground located approximately 30 miles from King Salmon is the main access point for the park. Brook Camp is only accessible by small float plane or boat. Bear viewing, flight um, seeing tours of the park can also be arranged from Kodiak, Homer and Anchorage. Accommodations and amenities, all visitors to Brook Camp include the lodge guests, day visitors and campers, must pay a user fee. Brooks Camp Campground is one mile from Brook Falls by trail, and there is a per person per night fee for camping. Backcountry users are not charged a day use fee. Okay. Reservations for both camping and day use must be made prior to your client's visit through the National Parks Reservation Service. For clients wishing to stay at a lodge, reservations can be made in advance. Reservations are necessary. Attractions. So you have Algonac Wild River traverses across the Alaska Peninsula towards Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea, providing opportunities to experience wilderness, wildlife, and cultural heritage of Southwest Alaska. Brook Camp Visitor Center, located on Naknet Lake near the mouth of Brooks River. Uh, Bears, Brook River Falls, bears in season congregate for dinner on migrating salmon. Brooks River National Histor Historic Landmark, North America's highest concentration of prehistoric human dwellings. King Salmon Visitor Center, located near the King Salmon Airport Terminal. Valley of 10,000 smokes, what remained after Novarupta volcano exploded, spewing seven miles of glowing ash and pumice into the air. Aniak National Monument and Preserve. Uh, located inside a Katma National Park and Preserve, east of Port Hayden and 150 miles southwest of King Salmon, 
its centerpiece is the six mile, 2000 foot deep Aniak caldera, which was created by the collapse of a 7,000 foot volcano some 3,500 years ago. Later volcanic activity built a 2200 foot vent mountain inside the caldera. The Aniak Chak uh, National Monument was established in 1978 to protect the geologic um, and volcanic features associated with one of the most spectacular dry calderas in the world. The preserve was established in 1980 with the purpose of maintaining the natural state of the area. The 32 mile Aniak Chak River is designated Wild River located entirely within the monument and is unique as its headwaters originate in a fresh water lake inside the caldera. The river starts slowly from Surprise Lake and speeds up its flow through the narrow 1500 feet high opening in the caldera, caldera wall called the Gates. Caldera is scenic, featuring 2,000 feet walls, cinder cones, and other volcanic wonders. There are no fees for entrance into the monument. However, a backcountry permit and bear-proof canisters are required for campers and backpackers. There's less than 200 visitors frequent this park each year. So very, you know, shows. The visitors um, should be prepared to, for windy conditions, especially through the gates area often within the caldera as well. Coastal area is often shrouded in fog and rain. Summer temperatures range from mid 40s to the high 70s. Uh, more information on this national monument and other public lands is available through the King Salmon Visitor Center located next to the King Salmon Airport Terminal and through the public lands website. Um, Anid Shock is about one and a half mile hours, one and a half hours flying time from King Salmon and a half hour flight from Fort Hyden. There are daily commercial flights from Anchorage to King Salmon. From there, a number of air taxi charters are available. The park is also accessible by boat from any of the coastal villages. And then attractions to see is the caldera created by the collapse of a 7,000 foot volcano. And then the river is a designated wild river located within the monument. All right, Peninsula and King Salmon Nanak. Uh, sits on the Nanak River, 290 miles southwest of Anchorage. King Salmon is the gateway to the Katmai National Park and Preserve and McNeil River State Game Sanctuary, two of the most well-known bear viewing areas in Alaska. Okay, remember that. It is also stopping off point to catch a charter to any of the numerous lakes and rivers, including the Naknek, Lalamana, Basharuf, and Ogasushik. Lakes, <laughs> where anglers seek all species of salmon and trophy trout. The area contains a complete range of flying, fly-in fishing and adventure camps and lodges. Many day fishing and wildlife viewing charters access the area for an Anchorage, Kenai, Soldatna, and Homer. King Salmon is also the jumping off point for adventures, anglers, wildlife expeditions headed to Bashara. National Wildlife Refuge and Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge. Location, King Salmon is located on the north bank of the Naknek River on the Alaska Peninsula, 15 miles upriver from Naknek. It is 284 miles southwest of Anchorage. Uh, you can get there by scheduled air service from Anchorage about one hour by jet. They have one hotel, which is an inn, several local lodges, and a couple restaurants. There is access to more than 30 fly-in lodges and or camps. Attractions there, you have King Salmon Visitor Center next to the airport terminal, both the National Park and U.S. Wild Fish and Wildlife Service staff the center. Includes information, trip planning desk, exhibits, interactive programs, and audiovisual room featuring wildlife films. Also educational books, including numerous air sea navigation charts, and topographic maps. Information about air charter services and fishing and hunting guides licensed to operate on public lands can also be obtained at the visitor center. Naknek is located on the Naknek River and is connected by a 15.5 mile to King Salmon. Naknek is a seat of a 531 mile Bristol Bay Borough, one of the largest commercial salmon fishing areas in the world. Due to its strategic location, Naknik supports several salmon processors, which draw several thousand seasonal workers each summer. Location, Naknik is located in the north 
bank of the Knocknick River near its mouth on Bristol Bay. It is 15.5 miles from King Salmon and 300 miles southwest of Anchorage. Most passenger and charter service out of King Salmon, which has daily scheduled service from Anchorage. There are a few hotels in several B&Bs, couple restaurants, numerous fishing and hunting and adventure lodges located throughout the area. And then places to visit, you have Bristol Bay Historic Museum, features archaeology, history, indigenous culture, documents Nognik's history as one of the largest commercial salmon fishing and canning headquarters in the world. Museum building is the original Fisherman's Hall, an early meeting place for fishermen. Displays show the progression from the early subsistence oriented lifestyle of the first Bristol Bay residents to the coming of the Russian fur traders in the oral histories and family trees of pre present, present residents. Russian Orthodox St. John Baptist Chapel, reportedly constructed in 1886. It is on the National Register of the Historic Places. Okay, you got that? All right, Alaska Peninsula, Lake Clark. Uh, park and preserved wilderness of seacoast mountains, glaciers, and lakes filled with trophy-sized rainbow trout. Lake Park National Park was established to protect the area's scenery, fish, wildlife, and traditional lifestyles of local residents. To accomplish these goals, the area was named a national monument in 1978. In 1980, it received a wilderness designation, became a national park and preserve. Spectacular scenery stretches from the shores of Cook Inlet across the Chicmet Mountains to the tundra-covered hills of the western interior. The Chicmets, uh, where Alaska and Aleutian ranges meet, are an awesome jagged array of mountains and glaciers. They include two active volcanoes, Mount Redoubt and Mount Lamna home to three wild and scenic rivers and numerous lakes, including 40 mile long Lake Clark. The park offers excellent fishing and wildlife viewing. Many river and lakes are critical salmon habitat areas for the Bristol Bay watershed. One of the world's largest salmon fishing grounds. Summer temperatures um, average between 50 Fahrenheit and 65 Fahrenheit with considerable precipitation. Weather conditions in the region can change suddenly and proper equipment such as rain and cool weather gear, extra food, cooking fuel are essential for any backcountry travel. There are no entrance fees in the Lake Clark National Park and Preserve and visitors average 4,900 annually. To get there to access the lake is by small aircraft on a one or two hour flight from Anchorage, Kenai or Homer to Port Ellsworth. On the south shore of Lake Clark or to the private lodges in the area. The park's only maintained trail, the Tunnelian Falls Trail begins in Port Ellsworth. Attractions, you have the McNeil River State Game Sanctuary, home to the world's largest concentration of brown bears, also home to various land and sea mammals, bald eagles, and waterfowl. This area has no roads, no modern amenities, um, and is virtually undisturbed by human development. Mulchnatna, Naknak, Kvidavdak, rivers, woo, all highly productive fishing waters. Wilderness, the Chikma uh, Mountains are described above three wild and scenic rivers and numerous lakes, including 40 mile long Lake Clark, fishing and view wildlife viewing, tundra, riparian, coastal and forest zones. Woo. Kodiak Island Archipelago region consists of 16 major islands, including Kodiak, Afonga, Ban, Uganak, as well as numerous smaller islands. It is located 90 miles south of the Kenai Peninsula in the Gulf of Alaska and parallels the Alaska Peninsula for about 177 miles. Kodiak Island is also known as the Emerald Isle for its lush green landscape at 3,588 miles. It is the largest island of the group and the second largest island in the U.S. First inhabitants of the island were the seafaring Ulitic people who can trace their history back nearly 8,000 years. Rich marine resources supported their substance, subsistence, subsistence lifestyle. There were many coastal villages throughout the islands. Russians arrived in the late 1700s to hunt sea otters 
and establish themselves on Kodiak Island. Today, villages scattered throughout the archipelago offer a glimpse into the history. More than a thousand archipelagical sites have been identified and the Aluti Heritage Foundation is working to preserve cultural traditions. The Russian Orthodox religion also offers a lasting legacy of Russian influences. The military has left its mark as well. Kodiak was a major staging ground for North Pacific operations during World War II and abandoned bunkers are evident and accessible on Kodiak Island. This has attracted war veterans and many others to visit where they are or their family members were stationed during the military service. The archipelago is home to five state parks and recreation areas, including Afognik Island State Park, public use cabins, Buskin River State Recreations Area, campsites on rivers, Fort Abercrombie State Park, originally a World War II coastal fortification. It was one of the first secret radar installations in Alaska, and now a National Military History Museum is one of the old bunkers, provides a forest setting for picnics and uh, military oops, and camping adventures, um, fishing, hiking trails, beaches, and features. Miller Point, an excellent spot for bird and whale watching in the spring and fall. Peshak River State Recreation Site, picnicking and camping, and then the Shuak Island State Park, public use cabins available. So the Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge covers two thirds of Kodiak Island, 1.8 million acres, offers protected habitat for world famous Kodiak brown bears, one of the world's largest car carnivorous land mammals. The refuge is one of the most accessible bear viewing areas in the state, but your client will need to fly or take a boat to the prime bear habitat. If the salmon are in, your clients can have a good chance of seeing bears, ask local tour operators to confirm salmon and bear movement before booking a date. More information can be found here through the Public Lands Information website. At Fognec Island, clients can watch or participate in the archeological digs of indigenous sites, view wildlife, enjoy excellent hunting, fishing opportunities. City of Kodiak, the largest community of Kodiak Island, home to the largest fishing fleet in Alaska, more than 2,000 commercial fishing vessels, making it the second largest fishing port in the United States. Between 1792 and 1799, the town of Kodiak was the capital of Russian America. Kodiak also provides access to the Katmai coast via flow plane or boat. Uh, the city of Kodiak is on the eastern tip of Kodiak Island, south of Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula in the Gulf of Alaska. 45 minutes by jet from Anchorage. The archipelago is 252 miles south of Anchorage in the Gulf of uh, Alaska. Scheduled jet, scheduled or charter air taxi service in Alaska State Ferry from Homer or Whittier. They have hotels, motels, B&Bs, and wilderness lodges, many restaurants, food, convenience shops, and most supplies are available. You have the Alutik Museum Archaeological Repository, artifacts, artwork, history, display, and gift shop. You have the Bar Baranov Museum. Formerly a fur storehouse, it is the oldest Russian-built wooden structure on the U.S. West Coast, featuring Alutic and Russian historical displays, as well as a gift shop. Holy Resurrection Russian Orthodox Church, oldest Alaska parish, open during regular services. Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge headquarters displays films and visitor information. And then the St. Paul Boat Harbor Shalika waterfront, uh, working waterfront featuring interpretive signs for the commercial fishing industry. All right, guys, we're almost done, almost done. All right, Pri Pribilof Island, St. Paul and St. George Islands region, located off the southwest coast of Alaska, north of Unalaska Dutch Harbor, are actually five islands, two of which are inhabited, St. George and St. Paul. These two islands make up the largest Aleut community in the world. The islands were used at one time by Russian fur traders and harvest and preserve seal pelts. Uh -huh. Today, social life is, is community oriented with many traditional indigenous and Russian customs. 
The Pribilofs are home to the largest seabird population in the Northern Hemisphere. An estimated 2.5 million seabirds nest on the rocky cliffs of St. George. Birders from all over the world flock to Pribilofs for a chance to see more than 200 species, including puffins, murres, auklets, red-legged kittiwakes, and many other migrating species. More than 1 million fur seals congregate on the island every summer. There are 14 fur seal rookeries on St. Paul with designated viewing areas where to see them. A resident reindeer herd is also located on St. Paul. A deep water port and fish processing plants are located in both communities. Accommodations are limited, so those wanting to see Pribilof Islands should visit a guided tour. Uh, location, both communities are two and a half hours by air from Anchorage. Scheduled airline or charter service from Anchorage or take a boat or cruise ship. Accommodations, uh, St. George, one hotel, some B&Bs. There are no restaurants or banking service. Groceries, clothing, hardware, laundromat, and health clinic are available. In St. Paul, you have one hotel, some efficiency apartments, couple restaurants, grocery bars, bike rentals, um, ground tours, post office and health clinics are available and no banking service. Uh, birds, more than 200 bird species have been identified on the Pribilofs, including the puffins, auklets, mirrors, rare red-legged kittiwakes, and many, many more. Russian Orthodox churches listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, St. George, the Great Martyr Church is located on St. George Island and was built in 1936. St. Peter's and Paul Orthodox Church located on St. Paul Island was built in 1907 to replace the first church, which was built in the mid 1800s. Both contain historical artifacts and icons. Pretty cool. Wildlife includes reindeer, blue fox, various marine mammals, which add to the wildlife sighting possibilities. And last one, and then we do a tempest, Aleutian Island region. Okay, so past the tip of the Alaska Peninsula, the Aleutian Islands begin their 1100 mile westward sweep towards Asia. These islands are located in one of the world's most beautiful dramatic regions. Most of these windswept islands are wildlife refuge and are home to immense colonies of birds, whales, fur seals, stellar sea lions, and sea otters. The Aleutians are also known for their concentration of seabirds, including the rare whiskered auklet and the ancient muralet. The Unagon and Aleutic people have inhabited the region since the second ice age, some 8,000 years ago. Today, they have preserved their arts and lifestyle in the area's commercial fishing economy. Russian influences began the 1740s when fur traders came to the island to secure sea otter pelts. The Russian Orthodox faith remains the dominant religion in many communities. The Aleutians were strategically important during World War II and preventing Japanese invasion of the U.S. mainland. Japanese forces occupied the islands of Batu and Kiska in 1942, and traces of this air are still evident throughout the islands. Much like Kodiak Island, this area continues to attract many veterans of World War II and those interested in the era. Akutan, a small village of Akutan Island, have a population of about 1,000 people. Akutan is accessible only by boat or historic Grumman Goose seaplane. There are no roads in the village. It is crisscrossed by wooden boardwalks and sits at the foot of the active Akutan volcano. This is favored location for adventurous hikers who can climb to the crater of the volcano. Local hot springs are also a draw. The village and waters around it teem with birds and sea life. Some of the largest habitat, halibut, halibut, sorry, in the world have been caught in the Akutan Pass on the west side of the island. Occupied Island is in the eastern Aleutians, 35 miles east of Unalaska and 755 miles southwest of Anchorage. They have twice daily flights through Dutch Harbor on the Grumman Goose seaplane. In the summer, the state ferry Testamina stops about twice monthly. Accommodations, they have a small hotel and a bunkhouse style B&B. There's also a cafe. So again, not much there. 
Cold Bay, located on the tip of the Alaska Peninsula. Cold Bay itself is rugged wilderness, down-to-earth lifestyle, built as a co covered U.S. military air base during World War II. Cold Bay features a world-class airport that serves as an air hub for Southwest Alaska. Community offers access to the 417,533 acres as a Beck National Wildlife Refuge. Home to feeding and resting grounds for hundreds of thousands of birds. More than 98% of the world's black brant arrive here each year, as well as, oh no, Sandy. All right, because we're almost ready for the test. <laughs> Wildlife viewing is also popular and includes one of the highest brown bear densities in the world. Um, it's Cold Bay is located um, in the Enzebeck National Wildlife Refuge at the western end of Alaska, 634 miles southwest of Anchorage, and 180 miles northeast of Unalaska. Access, scheduled, and chartered service from Anchorage and local areas twice a month, state uh, ferry, twice uh, service in the summer. They only have one hotel and restaurant. False Pass, traditional Unigan community, attracts avid hikers, kayakers, wildlife aficionados from around the world. False Pass is located on an important passageway between North Pacific Ocean and Bering Sea. False Pass is the only surviving Unigan village on Unimac Island, the first and largest island in the Aleutian chain. Visitors may see a variety of wildlife here, Day trips include a boat ride to the abandoned village of Morsavi. Many residents are versed in traditional Unigan practices, so your clients may meet a local or who can describe the traditional uses for plants and berries found in the island. They may enjoy berry picking, hiking, and fishing for halibut from the ferry dock. Falls Pass is located on the eastern shore of Unimac Island on a strait connecting the Pacific Gulf of Alaska to the Bering Sea, 646 miles southwest of Anchorage. Uh, scheduled and charter airline from Cold Bay and twice a month state ferry service in the summer. They have one B&B &B and a bunkhouse provide room seasonally. Local store has limited food and supplies. King Cove is located just across the bay from the community of Cold Bay. King Cove is known for its warm, welcoming residents and breathtaking landscapes. This is a size, this is a site of one of the state's largest and oldest salmon canneries. Bears are abundant and wildlife viewing is unparalleled. In the spring and early fall, whales migrating through Velkusky Bay offer visitors the opportunity for an up-close view of these majestic creatures. On the south side of Alaska Pen Peninsula, on a sand split. Fronting, fronting Deer Passage and Deer Island, 18 miles southeast of Cold Bay and 625 miles southwest of Anchorage. Scheduled and chartered aircraft from Cold Bay or Sandpoint, they have an inn and a couple restaurants. Sandpoint offers a mix of modern amenities, once in a lifetime experiences. This area is favorite with hikers, large part because of its beautiful views and lack of bears. The island is also home to spectacular population of bird life, including eagles, puffins, cormorants, and kittiwakes. A free roaming herd of buffalo was imported to the island years ago. Local boat owners are often available to offer tours around nearby waters um, to view a vast array of marine life. Popular day trip destination is nearby Anga Island with a rare petrified forest, one of the largest abandoned villages in the Aleutians and the relics of gold mines. Sandpoint is located in Humboldt Harbor of Papa Island off the Alaska Peninsula, 575 miles from um, Anchorage. Scheduled air service from Anchorage and twice a month ferry in the summer. They have a motel, B&B, and a few restaurants. Okay. okay, and Unalaska, uh, uh, largest community in the Aleutians, Unalaska Port of Dutch Harbor is home to the most productive seafood processing port in the U.S. Large processing facilities ships from countries throughout the world. Fishing fleet of Dutch Harbor holds the distinction of leading the nation in quantity and value of landed catch. Estimated 706 million pounds of seafood is processed annually. Valued at more than 207 million 
Unalaska on Unalaska Island and its sister town Dutch Harbor on Amanac Island are at the confluence of the North Pacific Ocean and the Bering Sea. This is one of the richest fisheries in the world. Dutch Harbor is the only natural deep water port in the Aleutians and more than 400 vessels call here each year from as many as 14 countries. The two towns lie deep in Unalaska Bay and are connected to each other by a 500 foot bridge. Unalaska was the first headquarters for the Russian American Company and Cornerstone in the lucrative sea otter fur trade in the 1700s. It was also an important harbor for miners sailing to the golden beaches of Nome. In 1939, the U.S. Navy and Army built installations, and at one time, the area supported 60,000 servicemen. In 1942, the Japanese opened their Aleutian Islands campaign by bombing Dutch Harbor and occupying Atu and Kiska Islands, in the only foreign invasion of U.S. soil during World War II. Besides the history and cultural opportunities presented by Unalaska, port of Dutch Harbor, visitors can also uh, enjoy the wide variety of birds as well as marine mammals. Summer wildflowers are spectacular and one of the richest fisheries in the world. Charter fishing opportunities for salmon and halibut are uh, plentiful. Oh, cool. See, Michael is paying, is paying attention, sharing info. Um, the city of Unalaska is in the northern end of Unalaska Island, the second largest island in the Aleutian chain. Dutch Harbor in total encompasses Amanac Island, 500 feet foot bridge, connects the two islands. Unalaska is approximately 800 miles southwest of Anchorage. Access, you have scheduled daily air service from Anchorage. Ferry service is provided by the Alaska Marine Highway System twice a month from May through September. Refer again to Alaska Marine Highway System for up-to-date schedules and fares. Couple of hotels, motels, bunkhouse, B&B options, several restaurants, grocery stores, banks, and automatic banking machines, gift shops, public library, swimming pool, community racquetball, indoor running track and health clinic are also available. In addition, the largest hotel has convention facilities. Wow, that's the first I heard, right? Attractions there, you have the Aerology Building Visitor Center located in Unalaska Airport, once served as a central weather monitoring station. Now it is one of the most intact and architecturally significant World War II buildings in the Aleutian Islands. Provides another place to experience the region's military history with World War II exhibits, films, and reconstructed radio room. Aleutian World War II National Historic Site, known as one of the 10 best places in the U.S. to experience World War II history, recognizes the Unigon people who lost their homes. The site was designated in 1996 to honor the troops who served there. You have the Church of the Holy As um, Ascension, first built in 1825, then enlarged in 1894. It is now the oldest Russian-built church still standing in the country. The repository of more than 700 Russian Orthodox icons, books, and paintings is on the National Register of Historic Places and is one of the most photographed sites in the Aleutians. Henry Swanson Visitor Center. A uh, former home of one of the most popular residents of Unalaska. Uh, it is, contains books, maps, tourist information, displays. Swanson was a fox farmer and fisherman who grew up in Unala Unalaska as a child, watched ship, as a child, watched the ships depart from the harbor for the Nome Gold Rush. You have Mount Balihu. 1,630-foot-foot foot, foot mountain containing artifacts from the military built up including tunnels that allowed gunners to cart ammunition from one side of the mountain to the other. The Onalashka Corporation owns most of the land and a permit is required to visit. And then you have the Museum of Aleutians, one of the best collections of Unigon artifacts in the world. An archaeological dig just outside the museum has uncovered more than 100,000 artifacts from layer after layer of Aleut villages dating back 5,500 5, years. Sitka Spruce Park, National Historic Landmark, where six trees planted by Russians in 1805 have survived. There is also good hiking in the mostly treeless landscape. Whew. 
This is a long one, huh, guys? All right, let's take our test and then everybody can get on with their day. Look at you. Wow. All right, Amber. Amber's on the roll. Wow. That was a long one, huh, guys? All right. So again, yes, thank you so much, Amber, and thank you everybody for, for sharing with us. Um, we will come back on um, to uh, training next Wednesday. So you guys have a week off, okay? Um, so if you're doing my princess with me also, we will be uh, doing it next Sunday, not this Sunday, because I will be at a wedding. Um, let me just take a quick look here what we have left. So we have one, two, three, four left. So we, these are kind of long ones. So it looks like we're probably gonna need one more day besides next Wednesday. And I don't think we have that registered. So I will schedule it for, um, to finish in May, okay? So again, thank you guys um, for joining me. I really appreciate it. So we'll add one extra day for Alaska. Um, we'll just do it for the first Wednesday in May, same time, same place, okay? So we can um, get them done, get her done, right? All right, guys. So congratulations, everybody. Stay plugged in. Again, the recordings will be here. The recordings will be here. I appreciate you guys. Um, join me um, on Wednesday for Alaska, and then we're doing U.S. Virgin Islands, and then we're doing London, Okay. Not next, uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, I'm actually going to be headed to Cancun, but I'll be in Orlando for like seven hours. So um, I'm going to be doing my London training from the airport in Orlando um, on my way to Cancun because we have a dang seven hour layover. But anyway, um, again, it'll be fun. We'll learn all about London. So um, what we say is you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So I appreciate you guys. I hope you learned a lot. It's a lot to learn, right? But guys, look at all the knowledge you're getting. Um, so again, let's have some fun. Have an amazing week, guys, or weekend, and I will see you soon. Okay? Bye, guys. Have fun at your wedding. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and take a quick picture of this for Sandy because Sandy helps us out so much. So, um, bah, bah, bah. here we go.